Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic, back with another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to remove the left side cylinder head on a 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. The easier way. I'm going to show it on a minivan, but it's going to pertain to all the other vehicles that the 3.6 comes in as well. Some things might be slightly different, but fundamentally the procedure is going to be the same. So go ahead and check it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to break down this video into different sections, different parts. In the description below the video, I'm going to help you out because I know it's going to be a lengthy video. I'm going to put what part contains what. So if you want to jump from part one to six, seven, or eight, whichever part you're needing, feel free to do that. But I'm going to put it in the notes below each one of the videos. So please bear with me. This is going to be lengthy because it's somewhat of a lengthy repair and I want to go in depth so that you know exactly what I'm talking about item for item. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. Now, before we do any repairs on the vehicle, usually we're going to disconnect the battery cable. We're going to get a step that we're going to do before. Now, we will be taking the fuel line off of the intake, so we want to go ahead and depressurize the fuel line. What I recommend doing is, what we'll do is we'll get access to the fuse box under the hood here. This one actually has a dedicated fuse for the fuel pump. So the best way to get the fuel pressure bled off is start the vehicle, let it run, find the fuel pump fuse, pull it out, and let the engine run until it finally stalls out. Once it starves the fuel, it's going to cut itself off. At that point, we can go ahead and disconnect the negative battery cable. So before we do any kind of repairs on this vehicle, we're actually going to be taking the battery cable off the alternator so we don't want it touching up against anything, uh, grounding out, shorting out, anything like that. We need to go ahead and back off the negative cable nut and take the cable off. That way we're safe and we don't cause any damage to us or the vehicle. Of course we get our nice beautiful decorative engine cover that has a little sound dampening material up under it. We just pop it straight up. It has a total of four fasteners. One of them apparently has stayed on the engine so we'll pull that off. That one's right here. So when you do take them off, Pay attention that there will be a total of four. Sometimes they stick very well and come off of the cover and stay on the engine. And we'll set that to the side. Throttle body's at the back. That's where the air inlet comes in through the back side on this one. And of course the intake actually hangs over on the left side cylinder head where numbers two, four, and six are. So of course that's the reason why we gotta take the upper intake off because it basically droops or lays on top of it. Now what we'll work on next is getting this upper air filter housing off and work on getting the boot and then get down to the curve right here, the little plastic housing that goes onto the throttle body. We'll get those off so that we can get more access to the intake and we'll start getting to those fasteners. So start here. Now removing the upper filter housing covers is nothing difficult. It's basically the same procedure you would use if you were checking the air filter. You've got three snaps around the perimeter. It's got little fingers that go into some little tracks on the back. Pick up and move that to the side. Now we've got the air filter box upper portion off. Now, we do have a vent hose that goes from here over to the valve cover. And we also got a band clamp right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take that band clamp loose right there. And then we'll get the rubber boot off the plastic housing. Now that hose that came from the air filter housing. It went down that valve cover. I'm going to take it off at the valve cover and take it off with everything that I want it out of my way. One, it goes over the intake, so I need that out where it's no longer in my way. So there we go. We just pull it straight off. Now we can get to the air filter band clamp. You can use either an 8 millimeter socket or a flat tip screwdriver and just start backing off on that clamp. Just keep turning until you got a lot of slack. I can go ahead and grab it from the two hands, start pulling and working, and there we go. Now I'm going to grab everything that I just took loose, sit it neatly off to the side somewhere, somewhere where we will not damage it. Now we're going to start working on getting to the portion right in front of the throttle body. Uh, plastic housing that that rubber boot went on that goes to the throttle body. There's a push pin right here. 
go to grab the center, work the center up to get it off. Now the back side has two rubber bushings that snap down. So once we get this off, we'll try to get that loose. Another thing we gotta do, we gotta disconnect this air intake temp sensor right here. On this air intake sensor, all you gotta do is push in on the connector. Help release it. If it gets to where it's a little hard to push in, you can always get you a flat tip screwdriver and squeeze it right there. Squeeze in and pull out. Now when it comes down to taking that push pin out, sometimes it stays stuck in there pretty good. You can try different things like a panel popper, pry bar, um, also side dikes or even one of these. Uh, it just basically depends on how long it's been on there. Sometimes they come out okay, sometimes they don't. Uh, just take your time, try to get it loose. Like I said, there you go. Just pull up on the centerpiece and work it off. So there you go. This is like a reusable plastic rivet. Pushes down in there and when it goes in it expands. So get that out. Now we'll work on trying to get the back side picked up. Now like I said, it snaps in with two rubber bushings on the back side with two pegs that stick up. Now we gotta try to get it up. What we do is probably pick it up from the front corner here. What we need to do is probably get our hand under the back side as well. Try to get them off. They've been on there a while. They may be tight. And there we go. Now we do have one fastener here for this parasteering hose right here that we've got to get released because it is snapped on to the plastic housing for helping it to route. We need to get that relocated. One thing you're going to learn about a 3.6 liter is everything is attached to something. The power steering line is attached to this elbow for this air inlet. You'll find different harnesses all the way around the same thing. We just need to release it. Get up in here with just about any tool you can. There we go. We got that off. Now all we got to do is just grab this kind of pick it off. Now, it just slides onto the throttle body. It doesn't attach with a clamp or anything. It does have a rubber boot. You gotta kinda turn it to get it out. Tight clearances here. But that's where it goes on the throttle body right there. Like I said, it's just a rubber boot. The uh, rubber bushings I was telling you that snap down, that's these. That's where the push pin went. There's where our air intake temp sensor was. And that's where that pair of steering line attached. Now we've got a few things we got to take loose over here in this corner. We've got a connector for the throttle body itself. Uh, we've got a uh, vacuum hose right here we need to pull up. We also got our map sensor right here we need to unplug. And like I said, we've also got wires that are clamped on in different places. Some have push pin type fasteners, some have some that just slide down and lock on. You've got to pry off. We need to go ahead and get these things unplugged and pulled off of the intake itself. That way we can start getting to a few more of the hoses and a couple of the brackets over here in this area. When it comes time to unplug stuff like this map sensor, you usually see a lot of connectors we use, uh, what I call two-stage. You got a red piece right here, which is your primary lock that you need to pull back on. Once you pull back on it, then you got to squeeze down on the secondary lock. Once you squeeze down, then you can pull it off. So there's always two stages. One locks in place, and one makes sure that it stays in place. And the throttle body connector is going to be basically about the same basic style. Red piece you need to slide back and squeeze in on the end. And right here we got that connector for the electronic throttle body. Like I said, it's got a red lock, which is your primary lock you need to slide back on. And once you slide back, you can squeeze in and work on sliding it off. Sometimes they've been on there for a while. There you go. Get that off. Now we'll take this wiring harness, get it loose, and we sit it off to the back side of the engine. Something under right, like I said, you're going to take some of this wire and release it or remove it from the intake where it's routed. Just take your time, give them the best you can. Sometimes the, the fasteners break off. It's just the nature of the beast that they've been on there a while. Sometimes you can get them off. You got a fastener right here that goes up in here. And you'll follow it around. You'll see different ones and the way they hook on. This one right here actually kind of just slides in on one of the plastic edges and snaps on. So we'll work our way around and start getting it off everything that's in our way of removing the intake.